Good morning, GTAM family. Um, I just wanted to sing the song that has literally kept me encouraged probably all year long um, with it being such a dynamic year with such highs and lows. Um, it's important to remember that God is, has made a way and will continue to do so. And I just thought what better way to celebrate God and who he is than to sing about how he continues to do so. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You made your way. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. But holding on to faith you know best And nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out and you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win You wrap us in your arms and step in and everything we need you supply you've got this in control so now we know that you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing only because you've made a way oh, oh, oh you've made a way yeah. now we're here and we're looking back on where we've come from and it's because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love and mercy you've shown. Your grace was strong enough to pick us up and you made a way when our backs were and it looked as Lord you And we're standing here. Say you may. When our backs were. And it looked as. Lord you. And we're standing here. Only because you made a way. Hallelujah. And you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power, perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles, and there is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here. Hallelujah. Say you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power, perform miracles, and there is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here, Ooh. and we're standing here. Lord, and we're standing here. Say you made you made 
don't know how. And I don't know why. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. How you kept me. How you saved me. How you healed me. How you covered me. I'm grateful, I'm grateful that we're standing here only because you made a way. Love you all. Hey, good morning. So glad to be with you all today. Um, what is turning out to be a absolutely beautiful and spectacular uh, morning. Uh, this is typically uh, the weekend that we will be hosting our day at the park event, uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, and since uh, we are not uh, hosting that event this year, uh, giving consideration to uh, you know large gatherings in the midst of this co coronavirus pandemic, uh, I thought I'd do the next best thing, which is, um, you know, record this broadcast in the great outdoors, uh, also known as my backyard. Uh, so at least we can get a sense of being outside and, and maybe having some nostalgic connection to what we would typically uh, be doing on a, a Labor Day Sunday. So with that in mind, God bless you. So glad uh, that you are tuning in with us today. Uh, to all of you all that are joining us for the very first time, I'd like to extend my personal and pastoral welcome to you and pray that you find your time today a, a very uh, fruitful and uplifting one uh, and that you will leave uh, today's service broadcast uh, in a state of mind and life, both naturally and spiritually, better than you were uh, at the beginning of the broadcast. And to uh, all of our GTAM faithful, to the GTAM fam, God bless you, love you so much, and uh, glad to be with you all in this virtual uh, environment on this morning. So with that, um, I'm going to invite you to join me uh, in a word of prayer before we jump into the message that we have prepared for you today. Uh, in today's prayer, I want you to just pray in earnest with me. Um, I feel compelled to offer a pastoral uh, prayer, uh, not only for our fellowship, but for the land, uh, for our state, for our nation, uh, and for uh, the global community uh, in general. So I'm gonna invite you to join me in that prayer, uh, and then we're gonna get into the word today, all right? Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to come before your presence, uh, to see the sun smiling uh, upon our faces on this day. It's a constant reminder to us of your uh, everlasting presence. This morning, Lord, we come praying uh, for the land. We come praying for the healing of the nation. Lord, surely your eye is upon us. You see all that is going on, not only uh, in our cities, in our states, across this nation, but really globally. Uh, the nature of unrest uh, that is being experienced, the, the level of divisiveness and physical violent confrontations. Uh, Lord, all of this, while at the same time, uh, attempting to endure uh, a pandemic that has spread across the nation. Lord, we just want to pray. We want to pray for the people. Uh, I pray for your covering. I pray for the unification uh, of the body, Lord. I also pray for those that are in positions of authority and governmental leadership. Uh, we pray for them, Lord, that they will be driven by genuine motives, that, Lord, the heart of the king is in your hands and I pray that you would touch the heart of our political and governmental leaders, that you would uh, endow them with great wisdom as well as the integrity and courage to follow through and carry out uh, the instructions and guidance that you are revealing to them. Lord, I'm also praying that as a result of these circumstances, we will look unto the hills from whence our help comes knowing that our help comes from you, Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth. I pray that this time will yield a harvest of souls, 
that we will see many drawn and attracted to you uh, in these times and under these circumstances. In a season where all of our secular heroes seem to be falling and showing their human frailty, we can look upon you, Lord, a rock that is higher than I, an unfailing and ever faithful God. We can look to you as our role model. You will be our sole and only idol. And Lord, I pray that uh, you uh, will draw all men unto you and that their souls will be saved. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your faithfulness, even in the midst of these unprecedented times in our lifetimes. You are continuing to demonstrate yourself as being that very present help in times of trouble. And for this, we want to thank you. For this, we want to bless and praise you, Lord. Now, I pray for this service broadcast and this message that we are going to deliver. Lord, allow your spirit to flow. Lord, speak very powerfully and clearly through us, out of my mouth and into the hearts and the minds and the ears of everyone that is receiving this broadcast. I pray that it will inform and empower our choices, that it will help to govern how we live our lives moving forward, and that we will be better as a result. Lord, I look forward to how you're going to manifest and evidence yourself in the lives of your people people through this message today. In Jesus' name, amen. So GTAM, with that prayer, are you ready for the word? Word up. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, the 13th chapter, and we're going to focus uh, our attention on the 22nd verse primarily. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at Proverbs 14 and 18 uh, just for reference and to give some context. Um, but our primary uh, area of attention this morning is going to be on Proverbs 13 uh, and 22. The book of Proverbs is written, authored by uh, Solomon uh, to his son. It is a book of wisdom. Uh, it is Solomon's way of sharing certain truths and insights that will uh, benefit his son in life, right? That will cause his son to, to live a godly and prosperous life, both spiritually as well as naturally. And that's one of the beauties of Proverbs is that these are very practical, um, very simple to understand and actionable uh, statements uh, that we can uh, take to help govern our lives and our interactions with others, with God, so on and so forth. So it's a great practical uh, read to help give some basic life uh, instructions. Um, it's also the way it's organized is organized in 31 chapters. So it's a really nice uh, and, and, and concise way of being able to study the book of Proverbs is to use one chapter a day, right? So on the first of the month, do uh, Proverbs chapter one. On the second of the month, Proverbs chapter two. The third of the month, Proverbs chapter three. So on and so forth until you get to the end of the month. Because um, again, there's 31 chapters uh, in the, the book of Proverbs. So it's a great way to study it. And uh, you can be assured that at the conclusion of your study, you will be much better equipped to live a very sound and fruitful life, both naturally as well as spiritually. So with that in mind, Again, hopefully you've had a chance to, to turn there, um, to scroll through your device to get there, uh, whatever your Bible medium of choice may be this morning. So Proverbs 13, 22, and it reads, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And the primary uh, point that I'd like to speak to today really ties back to a key life principle for those of the faith, right? For those that believe in God, for those that are, are Christian, uh, one key principle, one key element of that is to be selfless, uh, to not think strictly and solely about your own uh, well-being, about what just benefits you personally, but for you to give consideration and thought to how your actions impact others, right? Uh, and in the context of, of this scripture, Proverbs 13, 22, is talking about a father uh, being mindful and aware and taking provisions to look after 
after not only his children, but his children's children. So not only is he looking out for himself, he's looking out two generations ahead to his children and to his grandchildren or his children's children. So let's uh, take a moment to just dissect this a bit to help give us some better insight, principally into what's being shared here in this Proverbs, right? So it starts off by saying a good man, right? And so in this context, a good man is equated to one who is just, right? One who is attempting to be righteous or be in right standing with God, one who is trying to live a right life, right? It doesn't mean that you are flawless. It doesn't mean that you have lived error free, right? But it means that the trajectory of your life, what uh, influences your decisions, what motivates you, what inspires you, what you are driven to do is to live a life that is just, live a life that is right, to live a life that results in you being a good man. Amen. And and so because you may have had failures in the past doesn't disqualify you from uh, adherence to the principles of this scripture, right? Because again, what is the overall trajectory of your life? You know, um, many times we have missteps, we fail, we have errors in our lives. And, and the question becomes, what now, right? We can't go back and change history. We can't go back and change the things that we've done. What we can do is influence things that are in front of us, right? Paul speaks of this, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus our Lord, right? So so even for those of us who have failed, who have uh, our human frailty has been on public display, right? It does not disqualify you from putting a stake in the ground and drawing the proverbial line in the stand and saying, from this point moving forward, right? So that is a good man, one who is motivated and inspired, one who is driven and influenced to live a good, a just, and a righteous life, right? And so a good man leaves an inheritance, right? Um, And an inheritance specifically refers to something uh, that can be possessed, right? That is the the concept of the principle of an inheritance, something that you can lay hold of, something that you can take possession of. And it is usually spoken of in the context of property, right? So, so in a literal sense here, right, it says a good man leaves an inheritance, leaves property, leaves something that can be possessed. But there is a broader principle here as well, right? Because not everyone is going to be in a position to own property. And therefore, are those who may not be um, as wealthy, those who may not have as much tangible or, or physical substantive Uh, objects to leave behind as an inheritance, are they then disqualified or relegated to a life of something unjust or unrighteous? Can they no longer be a good man? I would say, God forbid. And and this is where we're going to look at Proverbs 14 and 18 to broad, um, to, to illustrate, illustrate a broader application of what it means to inherit, right? What it means to take possession. Now, again, while it, in its literal sense, it's talking about property, principally, fundamentally, it's talking about taking possession, taking ownership of something, right? And we're going to see this illustrated in Proverbs uh, 14 and 18, where it says the simple, right? So the unlearned, the foolish, as it were, they inherit as well. The simple inherit folly, right? So the simple inherit, take possession, own, but what is it that they inherit or is it that they own? They own folly. They own foolishness, right? So again, I'm just sharing this to help illustrate what an inheritance is. An inheritance is not just an estate, right? An inheritance is not just a will. An inheritance is not just life insurance. Inheritance is not just land or property, right? Inheritance is anything that you can leave behind a value that someone in your line of succession can take 
possession of, right? Uh, and so a good man, therefore, leaves behind. It doesn't use, a good man doesn't consume, right, everything of value that he has, but he leaves it. He leaves some in store. He has some, he has some in reservation, some that he has set aside by intent, right? So it was his intent to do this. It was his purpose. It was by design that he chose to leave something of value, leave something of importance, leave something that can be secured and possessed, right? Leave an inheritance, leave something behind. Amen. And so a good man, a good man is intent on leaving something behind, something substantive, something tangible, something that can be possessed, right? A good man leaves an inheritance to not only his children, but to his children's children, not to just one generation, but to two, not just to his children, but to his grandchildren. So in other words, a good man is forward thinking. A good man considers the, the implications of his choices, his actions, and his inactions, not only how they're going to influence him, and not only how they're going to influence those that come immediately after him, but they're looking at least two generations down the road. How are my choices? How are my actions and inactions going to influence not only my children, but my grandchildren? How are the things that I'm doing today going to influence the generations that are coming behind me? And this is where we tap into that concept or that idea of legacy, right? What kind of legacy am I leaving behind, right? What am I intentional about leaving behind for my children and my children's children? What is it that I'm going to leave that they can take possession of? What is it that I'm going to leave that they can take hold of, right? And again, it's not always just things like land, um, or money or, or property or, or, or things uh, of this nature, right? But many times it's certain principles, right? Uh, it is certain ideas. It is certain life lessons, right? Are you leaving your faith behind for your children and your children's children? Are you leaving an example behind for your children and your children's children, right? What kind of legacy are you leaving for those that are coming behind you? Because a good man is intentional. He is conscientious. He is thoughtful. He is purposeful about what he does and the impact of what he does is going to have on those that are coming behind him. Amen. And, and so we have now this responsibility to carry that same intent forward. And it doesn't matter what was left for you. I, I tell my children this lesson that, hey, listen, I'm standing on someone's shoulders. I was blessed to be uh, born into a family and to be raised uh, by a, a mother and a father uh, who loved me and laid a wonderful foundation for me to stand upon, right? They, it was their intent, my mom and dad, it was their intent for me to have opportunities in life that they did not have, right? For me to be able to be exposed to things that they did not have the opportunity to be exposed to. For me to get an education, for example, that they didn't have the opportunity to have an education to, to, to get. Uh, and, and I tell my kids that I want you all to stand on my shoulders, right? And for you all to be able to see more than I saw, for you all to be able to do more than I did. One of my objectives in life is to position my children, right, to advance the cause of their life to levels beyond what I was able to advance the cause of my life, right, and to set them up 
uh, and to set their children, my grandchildren up, you know, for life's progression and, and for the opportunities that perhaps I did not have the chance to take uh, advantage of in my own life. And, and so I was blessed. I was fortunate uh, because of the family that I was born into. Many don't have that same luxury, right? Many weren't born uh, into that same privilege and, and they have had to start uh, at a different level, right? And, and again, it's the same thing, forgetting those things which are behind. You can't go back and change history. You can't go back and change what has happened, but you can definitely influence and you definitely have uh, uh, an impact on where things go from here. Amen. And so what kind of a foundation are you laying for your children to stand upon? What kind of shoulders uh, are your children and grandchildren going to stand upon in the progression of their lives? Amen. Now, let's think about this, too, even broader than the, uh, the, the family application of it, right? Because that's a specific application that the scripture is talking about. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, right? To multiple generations. But what if we took this principle and applied it outside of the family unit and thought about it more globally, right? Because we're all connected in, in some way, right? What if we said, hey, what can I do to make sure that whatever it is that I'm connected with, I'm putting it in a position to continue to excel, not only during my lifetime, but in the generation's to come, right? Uh, at work, what are you doing to set up your department so that your department can excel after you leave, right? It is great arrogance. And I'm just going to put this out here, right? It is tremendous, tremendous pride and arrogance, arrogance, and it speaks to a fragile and weak ego for those who want to see things collapse and fail after they leave. I said it. I'll own it, okay? Those of us who have gone around uh, and have hope for things to collapse, have hope for things to fail, have hope for things to struggle, and have even in some cases, I'm coming down somebody's street right now, and even in some cases have been intentional about sabotaging those who are coming after them because they feel that the, the, their successor's failure, right, speaks to how important and valuable they are. That is the sign of a tremendously fragile and weak ego and someone who is full of pride and arrogance, right? And we know that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble, amen? If that has been your mindset, if that has been your attitude uh, up to this point, okay, fine, so be it. Repent, right? Course correct, change. Draw that sign in the land, stick your foot or the stake in the ground and say, that has been how I have thought and behaved in the past, but I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind and I'm going to think and approach life differently moving forward, amen? And, and, and because, again, a good man, a just man, a right man wants things to excel, right? Leave something of value that can be left behind for the generations that are going to follow. So, again, going back to my example with work, right? How is your department going to fare uh, after you depart, right? Um, have you set that department up to succeed? Have you set that department up to uh, excel? Have you left behind, you know, a roadmap or, or, or something uh, that will be used uh, to help people, you know, tips and tricks and best practices and things of that nature, right? How are you going to leave your job in a state that is better for those that are going to come after you than, than what it's in today? You may have found of the mess and you got it all cleaned up great but what happens when you leave right is it going to be better when you leave um, again this application is so wide and far-reaching it's not just in the family in the home it can apply in the job it can apply in the church right how is the ministry that you're a part of how is the group that you're volunteering uh, to support and or lead how is that group going to be better once you step away from that role what are you leaving behind or are you one of those who again have approached this from that perspective of I'm so important I'm so valuable they can't do this without me right you all many of you all know uh, that my father uh, passed away a couple years ago and here recently um, 
we got together as a family uh, for what would have been his 71st birthday. And one of the things that I shared with our family, I'll share with you because it's a principle that I strongly believe in uh, and that I use with my children and it ties nicely here, right? One of my roles as a parent, as a father, is to prepare my children for life without me, amen? Their lives should not be dependent upon me so that when I'm not here, right, they don't know how to function. They don't know how to continue to thrive and excel in my absence. If that's the case, I have failed as a father, amen? And I have not prepared my children and my children's children for, for the advancements in life and the advancements in their faith uh, that I have a responsibility to do, amen? And, and my father did just that. He prepared me for life without him. So on the one hand, you know, while there is a certain sense of, of sorrow uh, just because I miss him and how much I love him, right? I'm not arrested by him not being here, right? I don't feel like I have to constantly be in a state of mourning and grieving because my dad isn't here with me anymore. He prepared me for life without him, amen? So I can continue to smile. I can continue to laugh. I can have a good time, right? And not feel guilty that somehow I'm not mourning or grieving enough his loss, right? And, and so that's one of the responsibilities we have as a parent is to prepare our children for life without us, right? And that not only means preparing them for our demise. Now, I'm going to make this real practical. So again, Proverbs is, is all about being practical, okay? So preparing your family for life without you is simple. Like get a will, right? So that uh, your final affairs can be taken care of. It's not morbid. It's practical. It's preparing your children for life without you. Let your final requests be made known. Write them down. Make it easy for them so that when you're not here, set up a playbook for them, something that they can go and pick up and look at and say, okay, this is what I need to follow. This is what my parents' wishes were. They made it known to me. And it takes away the guesswork, right? Let them know what your wishes are uh, if you become incapacitated and ill in terms of making uh, 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 life impacting choices for you, right? These are the things that you can do to, to leave something of substance, leave a possession for them um, that, that they can utilize after you're no longer here. Pay off your bills. Don't leave them a mountain of debt, right? Pay off your bills so that they can uh, not have to worry about stuff like that. Don't just think about you and yourself. Think about the generations that are going to follow. What are some other things that you can do that, that, that are really practical in this regard? Again, because this principle applies whether you have a large bank account, a large net worth, a, a ton of property and real estate investments, or whether you may live a, a much more modest life. There are still things of value, still, still things of substance that you can leave not only to your children, but to your children's children, right? What life lessons? What life principles, right, can you leave behind? What about your faith? What about your relationship and experiences with God can you leave behind? What about a work ethic, right? What about an example of what a godly home, what a godly mother, what a godly father, what a godly husband, what a godly wife uh, looks like, right? These are all things of great value and substance. And, and we have to think about these things and, and what we're leaving behind for our children. I think one of the greatest um, uh, misunderstood and underrepresented things that we leave our children is our example, right? And, and we need to think about this sometimes when we're making decisions. Having your children be exposed to and live in toxic environments, right, dysfunctional environments, is not leaving something of value that you want them to carry on with them into their lives. It's not the legacy and the example that you want to leave for your children and your grandchildren. Amen? And, and so think beyond just what's in your own selfish best interest and start thinking about sometimes what's in the best interest of the generations that are going to follow, right? What examples can you leave them on how to make tough decisions, how to choose between options that have a downside no matter what it is you choose, right? These are very valuable, uh, tangible, substantive 
uh, inheritances that you can leave for your children, right? Decision making. Here's how you make tough decisions, right? Here is how you make decisions. Here, I'm, I'm going to share another one with you that just came to my mind as we were talking. My, a, a lesson that my dad left me. He, he, he was a man of very modest means. Uh, he, he didn't have a huge estate, but he left me a wealth of things that, that have allowed me to flourish in my life. And one of the things that he left me was this principle. He said, son, never let your heart rule your head. In other words, listen, you need to be rational about the decisions that you make and not impulsive because impulsive decisions will get you in trouble, right? And, and that's a very valuable lesson that I've handed on to, to my kids. So now he has something that he's left not only to his children, but to his children's children, right? That, that don't let your heart rule your head. Here's another one I'll give you, right? He used to always tell me, he said, son, life is all about a lesson right and and the principle was that hey there is always something to learn in life even when you fail even when you make mistakes right learn from those things so that they don't perpetuate themselves again no need to beat yourself up for it right no need to 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 bemoan what happened learn from it move on life is all about a lesson so again it's not just about money land uh, uh, life insurance policies and things of that nature. All those things, although, you know, those things are valuable if you're positioned to do those things, but that's not what it's all about, right? An inheritance is anything that someone can take possession of. Someone who is coming after you, something that someone who is coming in succession to you, what is it that they can lay a hold of? What is it that they can possess, right? What is it that they can, can, can occupy that is going to leave them better then you found them because a good man is intentional. He leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. I'm going to close with the converse, right? The converse is shared in the latter clause of, of that same proverb 13:22. He says, and the wealth, right? And the wealth is the excess, right? Uh, what you have left over. That's the definition of wealth, right? When you take into consideration what you possess and you take into consideration your liabilities, those things that you owe, the difference is wealth, right? So uh, you may have a mortgage on a home that's worth 500000 and you owe 300000 still on that loan. So if you were to sell that house a day, you get 500000 You would pay off the 300000 What's left? That $200,000 of value is your wealth, right? It's not the full $500,000 because that's not how much you have free and clear, right? Which you, wealth is defined as what you have left. Um, and so he says, and the wealth of the sinner, right? And the sinner we know is someone who has missed the mark, right? So, so the intent was one thing, but what was actually action was something different. That is sin, right? The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So in other words, a good man, it's the converse, right? So a good man, right? A just man will uh, take and be intentional about uh, taking what he has and making sure that he leaves it for others to take possession of, right? He doesn't just consume it for himself, but he's intentional about making sure that it gets passed down to the future generations, right? But the wealth, the excess of those who don't do that, the wealth of the sinner, the wealth of those who missed the mark will be occupied and taken up by those who are just, right? And, and so that's the converse of it. If you are not intentional about leaving something behind for those who um, are going to succeed you, then what you had, because all of us have something that we can leave, then what you have will be left for someone else, right? Uh, someone else will derive the benefit of what you had in excess because you were not intentional about laying it up in store uh, for those that are going to be succeeding you. And again, a, a natural example of this is uh, in, in, in our current uh, climate and environment, right? If you don't have a will in place or an estate plan in place on what to do with those things that you have, how they are going to uh, perpetuate themselves to those that are coming in succession to you, right? The family that you're leaving behind, then it has to go through a probate process. And there is a great cost, a great legal cost 
um, to doing that. So so what could have been if you would have been more proactive and more prepared, right, more forward thinking, more intentional, um, what could have been left to the benefit of your family. Now, part of that, if not all of it, depending on the size of your estate, is going to be consumed in the legal process to, to, to determine that. Right. Uh, or we have sadly, in some cases, a dispute over the estate where family uh, members argue and fight with one another over who gets what because it wasn't made clear. Uh, in many cases, uh, by the one who uh, who passed away, right? So, so again, there there are a couple things that I want to leave you in closing with today's message. One is that be intentional, right, about leaving something of substance, something that those in future generations can take possession of, right? Uh, whether that's your estate or whether it's life principles, be intentional, right? Be conscientious um, about leaving something of substance for future generations to benefit from. And apply, the second point is to apply this principle more broadly in your life, not just to your family, but to your church, to your community, and on your job, right? Um, Be intentional about setting that place up for when you are no longer there. All right. God bless you. I pray that this message has spoken to you uh, and that you are leaving uh, this broadcast today better than the condition you were in when you when uh, it started. All right. So join me uh, in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much again for this time that we've had today and for the opportunity to share uh, this proverb, this life principle with those uh, that are tuning in. Lord, I pray that, again, it will influence and empower our choices moving forward, that we will be very intentional and conscientious about our conduct, uh, about what we are doing, our actions and our inactions and how they influence not just our lives, Lord, but the generations to come, that we will be forward thinking uh, and and that we will leave uh, those that are coming behind us in a better place, giving them the best opportunity to excel and progress uh, than we had in our own lives. So we bless you and we love you for this truth, Lord. In Jesus' name, we say amen. God bless you. Love you. Thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast today. If there's some way that our ministry can uh, reach out to you, pray with you, help you on your journey of salvation, please feel free to reach out to us uh, on our website, apostolicdoctrine.com. You can give us a call at the church. Uh, The phone number uh, should be there for you at the bottom of your screen to call uh, 253-896. 253-854-3630. I'm sorry, 253-854-3630. You can also uh, message us uh, through uh, our social media uh, platform. Uh, and you can also, um, uh, again, submit a prayer request through our website. Uh, our intercessory prayer team will be happy to pray with you. All right, so God bless you. Love you. I pray that, uh, again, you enjoy uh are enjoying this Labor Day uh, weekend and that you're uh, going to enjoy the rest of this wonderful Sunday. All right. God bless you. Love you. See you soon. Hello, everyone. Wasn't that an awesome word? Uh, Very, very uh, rich and a lot of uh, key nuggets in there. But I want to hew on uh, one element of your message that really uh, spoke to me. Um, Just thinking about the legacy piece, mm-hmm. and then even thinking about the, the heart of man. Um, that that legacy piece is so um, important, mm-hmm. you know, in our life to make sure that we live our lives in such a way that uh, we want to leave something behind. Right. And I love how you shared. It's not just the tangible things, but it's those um It's those words of wisdom, you know, those things that will forever be in our heart that will impact our behavior. Um, And uh, I I liken to uh, some of some of our writings, you know, different things Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we have done that Mm -hmm. will be um, something that is left for our children. And our children's children. Exactly. 
And so, and there's some other, you know, things that I believe God is, is going to um, bring forth uh, that will go to that legacy piece. But Agreed. Um, the, the other uh, thing that came to me is, uh, is the story of, of Joseph and, um, and how, you know, he was hated by his brothers mm -hmm. um, and, and, and how no matter how much they tried to uh, take away, mm -hmm. you know, what mm -hmm. was meant for him all along, um, it was there, it was, it was his. Mm -hmm. And I think about um, when you were talking about the, the heart and how some, you know, are not happy for that. And I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, we have our successors in life and mm -hmm. sometimes our heart is in a different place. You know, we're not rejoicing. Um, and, and some of it is, you know, just whether it's there's jealousy there right. or um, just other hidden things that, that can be in our heart. We're not happy for that person that is succeeding or excelling, mm -hmm. you know, or going to the next level. Right, and seemingly right. outperforming us or outpacing us or doing more than we did or whatever, yeah. Right, right. So I think it's so important that we examine our heart and make sure that, I mean, we should be excited for, for those that are um, excelling in life, that are... Uh, living their life in such a way that is going to leave behind um, a life-changing uh, legacy. Mm -hmm. And I thought about uh, Joseph just because of, of his heart and, um, you know, there was still that heart of forgiveness yeah. in spite of what was being thrown at him. Right. And then the love that his father had, you know, for him. Um, so that lets me know that no matter what, you know, in our life as we are, embarking upon these milestones um, and, and, and reaching these different um, uh, levels, you know, that God mm -hmm. is calling us to, that nothing can keep us away from, from that, you know, mm -hmm. from achieving the will of God as it pertains to that legacy that I believe he desires for us to, to leave behind. And when I say us, I mean just us as a people, right, right. you know, not just you and I. So. No, I got you. I think it's such a failed premise uh, when um, people are intentional about not supporting and, and sometimes even hindering mm -hmm. the progression mm -hmm. of those that are coming behind them. Right? right. I've I've seen, you know, instances where, you know, a father has, you know, been proud of the fact that his sons will never, you know, be as good or uh, achieve as much as, as he ach he's achieved, right. right? And that's such a failed premise, yes. right? Yes. And and that's not, and, and I don't say that with the intent of putting pressure on, on children, right? I think about, you know, certain, you know, professional athletes that have just attended, you know, achieved rather, you know, almost insurmountable greatness. Mm -hmm. And then they end up having, you know, children, right? right? And then there's this pressure <laughs> on those children, right? Are you going to be as uh, the, the next coming of your father, right? right? Or your, your mother, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's not intended to put pressure on them, right. that they have to achieve that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so the, I, 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 I don't want to say any names, but they're, you know, some of the, <laughs> some of the elites at their sport, right? They've had children and there's sometimes been this pressure placed on those children to, you know, to perform at that same level. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it's all about either. Exactly. Right. It's, it's really about, Hey, you know what, as, as a parent, as a father, as a mother, we want to leave our children with something behind yes. and our children's children with something behind that they could use to advance their lives, exactly. right? Uh, whatever that may be mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. right? They may not follow the same career paths. They may not, you know, necessarily, because the circumstances are different, right? Yes. So how we may measure accomplishment today and how our children's children measure accomplishment in the generations to come mm -hmm. might be different, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that we're leaving something behind, yes. you know, principally as well as, you know, as tangibly, substantively right. as we can, right. you know, leave something behind that can help propel them forward. Exactly. You know, so I think that's the broader principle. And I think it's a failed premise to see parents 
to see employers, yes. employees, to see people in church and, mm -hmm. and anywhere else it applies, you know, that relish the demise of something yes. when they leave. Yes. Right. And that 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 to me is just again, it's a false and failed premise. What what if Jesus were to do that? Right. That, I mean, we're, right. we're Christians. Right. What if Jesus said, you know what? I want things to be worse when I'm gone. And it right. was when I was here. That just so all, <laughs> all y'all fend for yourself. Right. I'm, oh, once Jesus. I'm out of here, all hell going to break loose and y'all going to be on your own. Right. I mean, and then be happy. About and then be it. happy about it. Sitting up on the right hand of, <laughs> of, of God on the throne. Talking about, look, look, I, at, look at, look at, look at, look at, I'm just messing up. Look, you know what I mean? That's, right. that's not the right spirit or mm -hmm. attitude behind that. Right. Exactly. It's, it's really, I'm going to come and I'm going to make you know, sacrifices to position those that are coming after me to be better. Yes. That That is a kingdom mindset. Yes. That's a godly mindset. Mm -hmm. That's a Christian mindset. And I, and I guess that's the broader point, yes. you know, of the message and in, in using um, that proverb as a practical yes. application. What does that look like, Exactly. <laughs> you know, in day-to-day -day living? So, yeah. Having yeah. that correct mindset. Yeah. And I, I mean, I would challenge, you know, everyone to, to really just do some some more, you know, soul searching. Because if, if ever that has come up, that's an indicator. You know, I love dealing with the matters of the heart. But that's the indicator that something is wrong with that heart. You know, if, if you want, if you're relishing mm -hmm. in, you know, someone else's demise or you want to see them fail or if there's even a little bit of jealousy or envy there you mm -hmm. know um that th those are the matters of the heart and god's not pleased with that and so we just we need to continue to do those heart checks and that's and 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 that to, to close with this mm -hmm. is that could be part of the legacy you know the 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 wealth of the center you know, it's laid up for the just, right? Because mm -hmm. to some degree, it's like many times, I think that's the fallout of, of what people have been exposed to, right? right. So if, if that's what I was exposed to, no one, if I was exposed to environments where no one celebrated my accomplishments, <laughs> where no one, you know, invested themselves in me with the intent of, I want you to be better than me. Right. It was always, you know, that crab mentality. Yes. I'm going to pull you down. I'm going to bring you down. I'm not going to help you. You know, I All had to get it on my themselves. own. You yes. get it on your own. If that's what you were exposed to, that's what you were brought up under. It's mm -hmm. not surprising that that's, that's your legacy. That was left for you, right? right? That's what your left to deal with and approach life and right? so that behavior is repeated that, that's passed that's down. exactly right but here but, but here comes the wealth of the wicked right uh, the wealth of the sinner right so that may have been your plight that's all you know mm -hmm. right but but now you can benefit from the wealth of somebody else right, right? if your heart and your intent is to be just to yes. be right to be a good man right even if that's all you've known, right? Well, here here comes some wealth to you. Yes. Here comes some wealth to you. <laughs> it don't have to be that way. You don't right. have to approach life that way. There's a better and alternative way of thinking of it, yes. right? So now, what are you gonna do with that? Yes. So be transform and renew. That's exactly <laughs> and stop right. That, you that's, know, stop that's, that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. 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 So you didn't get those lessons growing up. That's not the legacy, perhaps that you know, was left for you in, in your family tree, mm -hmm. but you can get that now, now. right? And That's now it. that can be something that you leave uh, as a benefit to the generations that are going to follow you, amen. right? So, yes. amen. We better transition. Good stuff, good stuff. Amen. All right, Kingdom Kids um, at 12th and uh, have some good uh, uh, lessons planned for them, lesson and activities. So so go to our website, www.apostolicdoctrine.com. And uh, on the homepage will be the, the Kingdom page. Kids. Um, you'll see Kingdom Kids there, yes. and there will be a link for you to click. <laughs> um, and you can just click that link, uh, and it'll take you to uh, the Kingdom Kids Zoom platform where you'll be entered, and you and your child will have a wonderful yes. uh experience thank so you honey you are welcome <laughs> we won't be clicking the click the click <laughs> all right god bless you oh, love you God. pray that you all uh, have again an absolutely fantastic labor day weekend yes. uh and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day all right god bless you toodles